but you think I'm just gonna stop because my account got banned? Fuck that! I got a topic to cover. This guy right here is Ayud Barak. He is a former Israeli Prime Minister, and he was a dude who was actively working with Epstein to restore his public image. Ayud Barak was seen in the past leaving Epstein's residence in New York, which was frequented by young girls while he stayed there, and he was known to have multiple business dealings with Epstein while he was alive. According to Michael Wolff's new book, Too Famous, The Rich, The Powerful, The Wishful, The Damned, The Notorious, Ayud Barak was present in that meeting Epstein had with Steve Bannon, and apparently during that meeting he told Epstein, don't worry, the secrets are safe. What secrets, Ayud? But the future is for the way women think. The way women think. That's correct. Is that not a sop because of, uh, of all the uh, depravity you've done against young women? Your, your new sop is that their, their women's thinking is, is, is the future? No, I've, been, I've always believed that women would be, in fact, be able to take over. I, I'm a firm believer and supporter of Time's Up. Are you kidding me? Jeffrey Epstein, the feminist. Time's Up. The reason why Time's Up was created because of people like you, Jeffrey, because of people like you. This is unbelievable. I can't believe this video exists. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm glad Steve Bannon released it. This is fucking crazy. To think this guy thought he could rehab his image. The greatest threat to people put in solitary confinement is they try to kill themselves. Imagine that. You're only in a room for 24 hours, you start to go crazy. You know, it's a real trip to watch all of these new videos of Epstein come out. I have been on this story for a year and a half. This man has been such an enigma to me, to everybody out there that is interested in this. And just to have these videos where he's speaking so candidly is fucking weird, man. These 10 seconds are part of a teaser for a movie called The Monsters, a film that's produced by Steve Bannon. This film contains a series of interviews Steve Bannon conducted with Epstein shortly before he was arrested in 2019. I really want to watch this movie, I do, but I don't want to support Steve Bannon. The guy's kind of slimy. According to Michael Wolf, Epstein was talking mad shit on Trump back in 2019. In his new book, Too Famous, The Rich, The Powerful, The Wishful, The Notorious, and The Damned, Michael Wolf details a conversation Ayud Barak had with Jeffrey Epstein about Donald Trump. Barak asked Epstein who was really in charge since Trump, according to Epstein's own words, was a moron. Epstein said that Bill Barr was the one who was in charge, quoting Epstein. Barr believes he'll get a big payday out of this. I speak from direct knowledge, extremely direct. Trust me. Quoting Epstein again. It's Donald's pattern. He lets someone else be in charge until other people realize that someone other than him is in charge. When that happens, you're no longer in charge. And for those of you that don't know, TikTok banned me recently. This is my second account. If you don't like that TikTok banned me, let them know. Report the problem. So Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers not too long ago asked to keep the jury questionnaire for her trial a secret. They wanted to pull from a pool of people who weren't aware of the whole Jeffrey Epstein Ghislaine Maxwell story. Well, Judge Allison Nathan, the judge that's on the Ghislaine Maxwell case, has denied this request. Judge Nathan said the press and public would be allowed to see the question of prospective jurors next month. Judge Nathan cited the media's First Amendment right to court access in this ruling. Media access? Does that mean they're gonna have cameras? Are they gonna go OJ on this shit? More details have come out regarding Epstein's New Mexico ranch. You know, the one where he wanted to start his eugenics project, where he would force women to have his babies? 
According to former employee and victim Maria Farmer, Epstein had at his Zora Ranch computer rooms the size of houses. All of those computers were hooked up to pinhole cameras Epstein had hooked up all over the ranch. Epstein would use these cameras to spy on his guests, like Prince Andrew. The Zora Ranch apparently had this whole underground compound that had mechanical rooms and tunnels. This part of the ranch was essentially the dungeon, and the first thing you saw when you entered this dungeon was a six foot by six foot oversized portrait of Ghislaine Maxwell with her legs fully spread, completely naked, and a gold dagger in her right hand. A Palm Beach County judge has signaled that he's going to release the secret grand jury records that could explain why Jeffrey Epstein didn't face more stringent charges for sexually assaulting dozens of teens at his Palm Beach mansion more than a decade ago. Judge Donald Hefeli said that since Epstein's out of the picture and 15 years have passed, it's more than appropriate to release the records though he has not made a final decision. These records could reveal why Epstein was given such a slap on the wrist all those years ago. All names will be redacted. That includes grand jurors, people who testified, and any alleged co-conspirators. I got this information from the Palm Beach Post and they're the ones that actually sued to get these records released. So thanks again, journalism. Bro, every time I hear about what's happening with Ghislaine while she's in prison, I feel like someone's explaining an episode of a sitcom to me. First of all, she's asking people for vegan-only meals in prison. Second of all, she's barricading herself in conference rooms. And now, third of all, she doesn't want any of her accusers being called victims in her upcoming sex trafficking trial. She doesn't even want any mention of rape by her former boss, Jeffrey Epstein. You know, you can't really make an argument against a pedophile sex trafficker if you can't use the words victim or rape. Elaine's lawyers are really funny for coming up with this request, but it just kind of shows they're grasping at straws. There's no way the judge is going to approve this. This bitch is toast. It is official. Prince Andrew must make himself available to answer questions under oath by next July 14th. This, of course, has to do with the lawsuit Virginia Roberts Gouffre has brought on to him. U.S. District Judge Lewis Kaplan was the one who set the deadline for these depositions this past Monday. As you may know, Prince Andrew's been trying really hard to avoid this lawsuit. He's been going from mansion to mansion trying to avoid getting served. Prince Andrew has until the 29th of this month to formally respond to Gouffre's lawsuit, but it seems like everything is in motion. There's really no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If there's no shenanigans involved, this motherfucker will have his day in court. In June of 2019, a man named Thomas Huff, a pilot and businessman from Georgia, bought a Gulfstream jet and an adjoining limited liability company together worth at least $3.5 million. Who did Thomas Huff buy this jet and company from? You guessed it, Jeffrey Epstein. Come on, man, it's me, baby. Who else do you think he bought it from? Barney the Dinosaur? After Epstein was arrested later in 2019, Thomas Huff tried to rescind his purchase, but Epstein was all like, nah. Huff is now suing Epstein's estate because the plane and the company has dropped $1.5 million in value. Apparently, a lot of people track the plane and harass the people who fly on it. Word of advice, folks, if you're buying a jet, Google the seller. Oh boy, Ian Maxwell just loves defending his pedophile sister, doesn't he? In an interview with Insider, Ian Maxwell said that the only reason why his sister is locked up is because Bill Barr is embarrassed that Jeffrey Epstein committed suicide under his watch. 
In the same interview, Ian Maxwell points out how Jeffrey Epstein worked at the same school that Donald Barr, William Barr's father, was headmaster of. Now, this is the first time, to my knowledge, that anybody has ever acknowledged this in a prominent news outlet. Listen, Ian, I know Ghislaine's family, and I hate Bill Barr, too. Fuck that guy. But dude, your sister's a creep. After trying his damnedest to try and avoid this lawsuit that Virginia Roberts Gouffre has dropped on him, Andrew and his legal team is seeking to dismiss this lawsuit altogether. According to Andrew, Virginia Roberts Gouffre worked to find slutty girls for Jeffrey Epstein and all she wants is a nice hefty payday. Andrew has come out and completely assaulted Virginia Roberts Gouffre's character and depending on who you believe, might be guilty of victim shaming. Guilty of that on top of all the other things he might be guilty of. So Andrew is trying to paint Virginia Roberts Gouffre as one of Epstein's accomplices. And say this is true, how would Prince Andrew know that? Did he know how Epstein's operation worked? We'll wait and see. The Manhattan prosecutors have refused to offer Ghislaine Maxwell a plea deal. This was revealed at Ghislaine's pre-trial that was held this past Monday. In that same pre-trial, it was also announced that Judge Allison Nathan has denied Maxwell's request to have her accusers not be called minors or victims. Maxwell's accusers will also use pseudonyms when they testify at her trial later this month. So no plea deal and her accusers can be known as minors and victims. Oh my god, they're gonna bury the bitch. With no Epstein around, she's gonna take the fall. The full brunt of it. As she should. We'll see what happens. Remember folks, Glay Maxwell goes on trial November 29th. Mark your calendars. Let's go. And another CEO goes down. The chief executive of British bank Barclays stepped down Monday following a report by United Kingdom regulators into his past links with the late financier and sex offender, Jeffrey Epstein. I think it's actually pronounced Barclays instead of Barclays. Whatever, another elite down. Jess Staley says he deeply regrets his relationship with Jeffrey Epstein and that he had no clue of Jeffrey Epstein's crimes. Before he was CEO of Barclays, Jess Staley was Epstein's private banker when he worked at J.P. Morgan Chase. Staley said his last contact with Epstein was back in 2015 when he and his wife went to Epstein's private island to have lunch. But he doesn't know about the crimes. Bad news for Prince Andy, a judge this past Wednesday said that he expects to set a trial date for the lawsuit against Prince Andrew between September and December 2022. Both sides have told Judge Lewis A. Kaplan, the judge overseeing the Prince Andrew lawsuit, that they plan to depose 8 to 12 people. And whether or not uh, one of those people is Prince Andrew, it's currently up in the air. You know, seeing as the lawsuit is um, against him, it's probably a good idea to depose Prince Andrew. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, Andrew's team did file a motion to dismiss the case entirely last week, and Gouffre's legal team plans to respond to that motion by November 29th. Will Prince Andrew get his comeuppance? Stay tuned. We got more information coming out of Michael Wolff's new book, Too Famous, regarding Jeffrey Epstein. Apparently, Epstein told Michael Wolff that he escorted Princess Diana on occasion. Wolff found this tidbit interesting because Prince Andrew has said he only met Epstein for the first time in 1999. 
we all know Diana died in 1997, so if Epstein is correct, then he would have had contact with royalty prior to meeting Prince Andrew in 1999. Ultimately, when Epstein became entwined with the British royals is a mystery. Maxwell denies introducing him and Andrew, and Andrew's own private secretary in a letter said that Epstein and Andrew met in the early 1990s. So, who knows? <laughs>